Ready when y'all are. Are you just getting jacked before the video? Just flexing your bicep? I see a little, uh... Do you guys know that he was in the games? 2013, individual athlete. Some people don't know that. None of these people watching know that. I know now that. they do? Yeah. All right, so we wanted to make a video on common open execution errors that we see leading into the open. Um, at this point, it's right around the corner, so some of these uh, might be a little too late to really apply. Um, I'll start over, sorry. <laughs> but it's an endurance sport. Unless the layout changes. But if the open stays the way that it is right now, you need an engine and you need muscle endurance and you need proficiency in gymnastics to get through stage one. So if you don't develop that, you're just wasting your time. So you still do need to get stronger. You're like way off in your strength metrics. It still needs to be a prioritization, but it shouldn't be your obsession. Did you get self-conscious because I told him you were a games athlete? Uh, maybe that did throw me off a little bit. <laughs> you got that. Hey, you know what? <laughs> We've got unlimited footage. We can do this all day. Yeah. That's not true. All right, Max. Open execution errors. Why we make this video? Um, or why are we making it? We haven't really made it yet. Yeah, we're making it uh, literally at this moment right now because people train all year and they put this competition on a on a big pedestal uh rightfully so i mean it got a lot of people into fitness it allows people to start to learn how to be strong and new learn new fitness modalities and i just see every single year hundreds of people just making really easy mistakes over and over and over and over again um now I think gym owners can fix that. Obviously, you got a bunch of people in your gym. You can create little videos with some of these ideas and send out to your clients. You, you know, uh, new people getting into it. Hopefully, there's organizations aside from ours out there that talk about these issues. But I really just, I hate to see people just wasting capacity and having to deal with more disappointment than they have to. I mean. You're, if you're going to put your name on a leaderboard with 300 plus thousand people, the likelihood is you're going to be a little bit disappointed with the result, but you can really, really climb the leaderboard by taking a more mindful approach. So we just kind of wanted to stop people from having to make some of the dumb mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you want to just jump into it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, most of these are probably behavioral choices that people make. So it's like, even if you have done all the right training, there's a lot of mistakes you can still make that could screw up the hard work you put in. So starting with the low hanging fruit, um, mainly things like that are super easy to set up, like your scheduling, when you do the open workout, like your nutrition, your game plan, like all these things should be handled now and should be practicing it right now. Yeah. You have all year to refine your system. And, you know, I, a lot of times for people that are just training for the mm -hmm. open, we'll have, you know, four or five weeks in the off season where we put one test on Friday and the same test on Monday and let them practice it. Like what time of the day do you perform better? Is it AM, noon, PM? Do you like being in real crowded environments with a bunch of people and a lot of noise and a lot of music where the schedule is probably going to get off because they have a bunch of people to coordinate through the tests? Or do you like to be 100% in control of your environment when you go getting prepared, peeing a million times, uh, whatever it is, like it, pick the perfect, perfect time for you to execute it. Make sure that everything's lined up in your favor that you have control over. Uh, we have to film now uh, if you want your scores to count, if you're on a team. Uh, people will like last minute, they're all ready to go and they're like, oh, I got to get a camera. That should be the first thing you have, a camera, a backup camera, set up your station, make sure everything's in the frame, make sure your batteries are full on both of them, and then warm up so that when you're ready to go, you go over, you press the button, you say your name, what region you're in, and you just go and you hit it. Like That's just such unneeded stress to warm up for 30 minutes, get ready to go, and then spend 10 minutes cooling down and making sure that everything fits in. Like That's just a... It just seems like such a, a useless mistake to make. Mm -hmm. uh, people that do it in the evening oftentimes will do it and be like, oh, I forgot lunch today. So I ate breakfast and I only had a protein shake during uh, lunch. I'm like, do you ever train like that normally? Oh, no, but I was just in a rush and I was really anxious. I'm like, no, that should be planned out. Like set yourself up for success. So we kind of have the low-hanging fruit there in terms of just like, 
make sure you take it seriously. Like figure out when you perform, how you perform, what you need in your body, what pre-workout you need, what music you want on there, and just really take care of making sure your mind is ready to get after the task that you're going after. Yeah, I mean, I, I've made the mistake in the past, like people get better every year in the open. Like it gets more and more competitive. And I've made the mistake of thinking, oh, I've done this in the past, so I've been a little too comfortable going into it and thought, I didn't have to have things prepared as much. Like I'm just going to be really loose and not let it stress me. And like, it's just going to be stressful. Like you still got to put the time into it and prep and prepare and make sure that you're doing the things that might seem super obvious to you because it does matter. It does add up. Yeah. You figuring out a way to care less won't make you perform better because there's, <laughs> you know, probably a hundred thousand new people coming in that care more than you care this year because you've already done it but mm -hmm. if you want to perform you got to care just as much always you got to take it seriously um is that good enough for yeah. point one yeah number two cool um pain. pain yeah so we talked a little bit about this pain um we were talking about it with regards to preparation um it actually sparked with mike's training i put some intervals that were fast and nasty crossfit based uh, stuff into his training and he was just like oh man we've done so much aerobic work I just don't feel like going that fast anymore and I said well you're gonna have to in a couple weeks in the open and uh, he was like yeah I guess that's true like I got to be ready to go fast I got to be ready to be in pain so some of it I think is preparation people know how painful the opens going to be so they almost think like I'll save my pain like I'm not gonna go into pain now uh, your training cycle needs to be pretty aggressive and pretty nasty if you want to make sure you're not just physiologically prepared for it but cognitively prepared for what the type of suffering that you have to go to get the scores mm -hmm. um so that's from a preparatory standpoint at this time you probably don't have that much time to put it into your training but um i wanted to talk about it more in terms of how people frame pain people are so scared of metabolic pain and i just laugh because i'm like you picked a sport that is almost solely that like yes you need to be fit and fitness will get you better and good training structures will get you better and quality training will allow you to compete better but when you compete in this sport it is going to hurt and when the lights go on and when there's three hundred thousand people on the leaderboard you know, five extra seconds, seven extra seconds, three extra reps in an AMRAP is going to be so much worse. Like the, you know, I tell everyone there's like a 97% effort is like, okay, you finish and you're messed up for five minutes, a hundred percent effort and your nutrition and sleep is ruined for the next two days. Like there's just something that happens when you literally push yourself to your absolute limits for a score. So you have to be prepared for that. There's a lot of in How Bad Do You Want It, the book by Matt Fitzgerald, he talks about it, that you, the better prepared you are for the pain that you're about to um, experience, the better you're aware of it and you know you're in control of it and you know that you are dictating how much of it you're willing to deal with, mm -hmm. the better you'll be able to cope with it. So I, I just like people to remember, you know, I, I saw it with people that I first started coaching, like I took them through a year and they were able to put out scores and it would feel better. They're like, oh, I beat my whatever 12.3 score by, you know, a whole round and it didn't even hurt. And I'm like, yeah, but when you go into the open, you're going to beat that score by a round and a half or two rounds. And it's going to hurt worse than it hurt when you did it back then because you're going to have done more work. So you have to be prepared and understand that the training process should almost allow you to deal with more pain. Uh, and the open is an opportunity for adrenaline and psychology and everything to line up for these massively, massively difficult experiences. And uh, you got to be prepared for it. You got to understand what you get out of it. Some people get money because they're professional athletes in this sport. But if you're not one of those, then you got to have a why, uh, which is a topic for another video. But I think just understanding that you're going to go into pain and that you need to understand like how much you're willing to deal with to get the scores that you want is important. Yeah, I like that acceptance attitude, like ex expecting the pain to show up before it actually gets there makes it hurt a lot less, I've noticed. Well, makes me feel better prepared for it. It doesn't make yeah. it hurt less yeah. uh, versus trying to hope it doesn't hurt because when you hope it doesn't hurt, you're probably going to back off and you're not going to perform to your full potential, Yeah. Uh, which leads us into the third one, false expectations. So um, I think, number one, like 
expecting that it's not going to hurt as bad this year because you're fitter is a mistake. Yeah. Um, one thing I just want to quickly touch on when we say hurt, we're not talking about like my elbows hurt yeah, from doing kip and pull ups. We're talking about like I'm breathing so hard, I'm hot, I'm sweating, my heart rate feels like it's you know coming out of my throat. Uh, we're talking about metabolic pain. Uh, if you have joint pain, that's that's not something that you should be <laughs> seeking in your workouts. Um, yeah, so false expectations. It's going to hurt. You need to be prepared for that. Uh, I think the, the most false expectations is people who are professionals make things look easy. So I know I remember watching uh, just, you know, somebody like Rich Froning or Dan Bailey do an open workout. Uh, and you almost get lured into thinking like, oh, I can. Mm -hmm. Well, he did uh, sets of eight. So I'm going to do sixes like he looked fine by the eighth round. And then you do sixes and you're two rounds in. And you're like, oh, my God, sixes were too aggressive. <laughs> uh, I think it's important to uh, understand that you are automatically going to think you're better than you are. You're going to go into a workout. You're going to watch somebody elite do it. And you're going to be like, I could definitely go unbroken through the round of three. Don't. Do not base your expectations on anything but your own training. If you don't have anything in your own training that resembles anything in the workout, you probably trained incorrectly. Um, you know, like there should be, you know, like 16.2. Obviously, we, we don't have people that have done the exact 16.2, but we have workouts where you're doing sets of 25 toes to bar, where toes to bar paired with double unders and squat cleans, you know you're going to experience grip fatigue and burning or weight increases in the course of a workout. So you've experienced all of those things in some sense. That's where you should base your pacing strategies on. If you need to do a round or two of the workout to kind of get a feel for it and understanding of like, ah, I need to do triples here. That's what you should base your expectations on. I think way too many people look at the outside world, watch somebody perform something and base their expectations on it. The one type of people I would say should do that are the elite. If you're elite and you want to be the best in the world and you watch somebody else do it, you might need to tweak the strategy a little bit to make sure that it fits within your limitations, right? Like, you know, somebody like Travis, if there's a workout with squat cleans, heavy squat cleans and toes to bar would try to make his money on the cleans and somebody like Noah might try to make them on the toes to bar. So, but they're both trying to get to the end point at the same time. So obviously there's going to be little discrepancies, but if you see somebody do it and you want to be at that level, then you need to set your expectations there. If you end up failing, whatever you tried to be the best that you could. But I think everybody in the other tiers just sets their expectations way, 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 way too high. And then they're almost always disappointed and they hate the open and they want to quit by the time it's over. Yeah, I mean, even having conversations with elite athletes, hearing them break down workouts that they haven't seen before, you can hear them comparing to other workouts that they've done. They go, oh, well, I did this workout once that had 25 toes of bar after these squat cleans. So it kind of gives them an idea. They're not comparing to what other people did. They're comparing to what they have done in the past too. Yeah. So it's a very similar strategy. Anything cool. else you wanna add? No, I think uh, that kind of covers it. I think the only thing that I would say is if you wanna be a competitor, uh, especially in this sport, until they change the nature of the open, you gotta learn how to compete in the sport. And that means you shouldn't be quitting and taking yourself out of it halfway through just because you're letting your own expectations down. Now, if you're gonna get hurt or something like that, obviously pull yourself out of it to be safe, but if you want to be good at the sport, you should be taking every opportunity you have to improve yourself as a competitor, which means that you should finish the open, do all the tests, learn everything that you can, figure out what you need to get better at, set a plan for the following year, and plan to play the long game. I think that's just a theme I think I have is I'm a, a more long-term based coach. I don't think of things in terms of like optimizing performance today because I don't think it's possible, but this is an opportunity, the open to learn. And if you're gonna do it, make sure you learn everything you can from it. Just don't waste the experience. Cool. Uh, if you wanna learn more week to week, like when the workouts actually come out, we do uh, training think tank and all the coaches here host uh, a, a weekly open webinar so you can sign up. It's totally free. You go check it out. Uh, it's live. No, we don't do it live. Uh, we'll pre-record it, yeah, pre-record it, pre it uh, after we see the workouts go down and then we'll give you a bunch of insight, you know, strategy, nutrition, timing, like things that we saw in the workout that are really going to help you in your first attempt. Anything you also want to add? Nope. Cool. <clears throat> Sweet.